Well, the massive earthquake that rocked Japan was the largest ever to hit that country and number five on the list of most powerful quakes in the past century. The biggest one ever in the U.S. hit Prince William Sound in Alaska in 1964 and measured 9.2. So what do these numbers really mean? Ron is here with an explanation. Good morning, Ron. Good morning again, Bianca. Well, the quake that hit Japan was an 8.9 magnitude. To give you a sense of what that means, every one number jump in magnitude is equal to the ground motion as recorded on a seismograph going up 10 times and it releases 32 times as much energy. The earthquake that caused so much destruction in Haiti last year was a 7.0. That means that the quake in Japan gave off 60 times the force of the one that devastated Haiti. And all of this raises the question, what would a major quake do if it happened here in the U.S.? The portion, as you can see, of the upper level has collapsed onto the lower level. In 1989, San Francisco was rocked by a 6.9 earthquake. In 1994, it was L.A.'s turn, a 6.7 that caused billions in damage and killed 61. But these were minor compared to Friday's powerful 8.9 earthquake off the coast of Japan. In California, um, from what we understand about the faults that are active, probably the biggest earthquakes we'd expect are about magnitude 8.0. In 2008, the U.S. Geological Service did a large-scale drill, imagining what would happen if a 7.8 quake struck Southern California. In this video simulation, Los Angeles is roiled as if it were sitting on top of a turbulent sea. Newer buildings built to California's tough earthquake code would stand. Older, unreinforced structures would not. After the first waves came, they're coming right at mm -hmm. you, we're starting to see waves that are bouncing back and forth in the low-lying area in the Los Angeles basin. We're talking about a lot of damage and destruction here, aren't we? That's right. The experts' conclusion, at least 1,800 dead and massive destruction. 53,000 people will be injured and $213 billion in damage will occur. California is home to four nuclear power plants, one of which, San Onofre, is right next to the ocean near San Diego, where over a million people live. The Japanese earthquake showed just how vulnerable the Pacific coast of the U.S. is to a tsunami. ABC's Clayton Sandell is in Crescent City, California, where the tsunami inflicted the most damage. Those waves came ashore here, basically destroying this entire marina. Experts tell us if the same 8.9 quake happened off our shores, it could drive a 20 to 30 foot wall of water as far as two miles inland. And it's not just the west coast where a damaging earthquake could strike. The entire country is crisscrossed with faults, though none is potentially dangerous as in California. The New Madrid Fault runs from St. Louis to Memphis, and the Ramapo Fault runs through Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York, one tentacle passing right through Manhattan. Even a moderate Ramapo earthquake could cause major damage to an area that is home to millions. Earthquake experts say that the strongest magnitude quake that could hit the mainland U.S. is around an 8, but there are geological conditions in Alaska and off the coast of Washington and Oregon where a 9 or higher could occur, and as Abiano was saying, has occurred in the past. And, of course, that would be even stronger than the one that wreaks so much havoc in Japan. Well, you hear how their infrastructure is so much better prepared in Japan than in the U.S. for an earthquake. I was just there mm -hmm. three months ago, and there was a close to a 7.0 earthquake that we didn't even feel. So it just gives, gives you a magnitude of, of just how big this one was, given the destruction that we saw there. It's also fascinating to think about the fact that it was a 7.0 that did so much damage in Haiti, 60 right, times exactly. stronger in Japan, and, and so much less damage in Tokyo. It really tells you how building codes can make a huge difference. And the California code is very stringent. Not quite up to Japanese standards, but, but stringent Ron, for new buildings. New buildings. Fascinating mm -hmm. stuff. Thank you, Ron.